second example we'll look at is the so-called Godard problem. So this is the, the fly-high problem, uh, since we want to maximize, in fact, the height of some missiles, some rockets. Eh? So the idea is that in the classical optimal control problem, which is a well-known one since the, the 50s uh, at least, the motion of a, of a rocket is considered. So the state is comprised of three values, the height, h, the velocity v, and to the total mass, uh, m. The idea is that the mass is being changed during uh, the time because the rocket, in fact, consumes some fuel, so the mass is diminished. The dynamics uh, involves the thrust, T, capital T, and clearly uh, the derivative of the height is the velocity. The velocity um, in its uh, derivative involves the thrust, T, some drag, D. Okay, so this is the drag, D, or the thrust, which is the control just here. Clearly, we divide by M to have the acceleration here. And of course, we have the potential G, okay, which is uh, on one over eight square potential uh, due to gravitation here. And the variation of the mass uh, accounts for the fuel consumption. So it is, in fact, uh, proportional to the thrust T, again, with some sign, some minus sign. Again, the mass is diminished while we thrust. There are some additional parameters in the system. Uh, you might have noticed some constancy here and so on. And the goal, as I mentioned before, is to maximize the final height of the rocket. Okay. Uh, I should have written some place that the final time is not fixed. So the final time is free. So we want to maximize H of TF where TF is free. We have some constraints, including bounds on the control, of course. So meaning that uh, we have a, a bounded thrust at our disposal, clearly, and possibly some path constraints. We will try to test these kind of things from the numerical side. Uh, the typical one could be a constraint on the drag or on the velocity. We will, for instance, try to see what happens when we have some bounds on the velocity. This kind of bound on the state uh, would be quite a difficult thing to take into account uh, using the maximum principle in a, an either an, an sorry indirect method such as through, such as shooting. Clearly, uh, it could be possible to do so, but uh, one would have to guess a priori the structure of the solution, namely uh, when will this constraint will be active and so. In the case of a direct solver, the very nice thing is that we will not assume anything and the solver will approximately try to guess what the structure of the control is. We might have some bong arcs where T max is reached by the control T or zero. This will be called the bong arcs. We might have some singular arcs where the control T lies within the interior of the constraint zero T max. And we might have also some constraint arc where for instance, the bound on the velocity, if there is one, is saturated, okay? Just to finish this uh, short uh, introduction and uh, motivation by Godard, we see here a uh, result of the numerical computation. So we have attitude, h, so this is h again. We have the mass here, we have the velocity here, and the control t here, okay? And in this case, we really see that there are three types of arcs, bound arcs, where we saturate the constraint either zero or T max or new. So this is essentially zero here and T max at this point. While we have some singular part, okay, which is in fact the part here, so which lies strictly between the bounds zero and T max for the thrust. And we see at some point that we have here a saturation of the constraint on the V max uh, bound on the velocity v corresponding to this constraint sub arc at this point. So we have three kinds of sub arcs in this in this case, which would be quite a challenging task to guess from the math from the, from the mathematical point of view, and which would be quite challenging too to solve uh, if one wanted to use a shooting method. The typical thing that in this kind of situation it is quite convenient to use a direct code such as the one we are going to see, and then to, in fact, use as an input for a shooting method, 
And in this case, uh, what we well, we would use would be a multiple shooting method to use the output of the direct code as an input for the multiple shooting method to have a very nice guess. And here we see that the solution is quite precise, in fact. And uh, we would get even a more precise solution in terms of shooting, having used this uh, solution of the direct code as an initial guess for shooting. So the idea is not that this kind of method, the direct and indirect, compete, but rather than they interplay in a very nice way, one being able to initialize the other one to eventually get a very precise and accurate resolution of the problem.